You don't want to lose that. Might take a little bit to get fresh fuel through there. On this carburetor, the fuel mixture adjustment screws right in here. Alright, I got my little screwdriver here. This is just an eyeglass screwdriver. That plastic cap must be on there. I'll show you how to get that off. A lot of people don't know that little hidden screws in there. I actually did a video on that. I got my propane tank all set up. I can't even see that it's lit, but you'll see this will get glowing red. See that little red there? And I'm watching the gas tank. I'm not close to it. Now I'll stick that in there straight in. You should feel it sink down if there's a plastic plug in there. And you just want to hold it till it cools down. Hold it real still. I give it about 30 seconds. That should be enough. And now I turn it carefully and gently pull out while I'm turning. Oh! There she is! There's the cap. You be careful, this could be hot still. It's warm. So I'm going to pull that off. There we go. Now there's just a flathead screw in there. And I'm going to back it off counterclockwise, maybe a quarter turn. I want to feel it lock in down there. There, I can feel it locked in. And I'm going to open it up a quarter turn. There we go. Quarter turn counterclockwise. Now, let's try to start it. I guess we don't need the choke from past experience. Make sure the switch is on. Try a little throttle. Same thing. I turned it out a quarter turn. It seems like it's not even doing as well as it was before. So I'm going to turn it back in. Quarter turn. And then a quarter in. pretty is it <laughs> okay now for me to clean these carburetors just takes 20 minutes so I'm gonna pull the carburetor off but I also want to check after I clean the carburetor if I still have trouble then I'm gonna check the exhaust screen it's called a spark arrestor usually there's a screen in here and those can clog up but this had some nasty fuel in, so my thought is, since there was nasty fuel and gook in the tank, it might be in the carburetor. And we know we've got spark, otherwise it wouldn't have started like that. So I'm not concerned about spark. I got a Torx bit here to take this carburetor off. It's just these two screws. And we'll pop those out. Hang on to that gasket. Set that aside. Whoo, we're still dirty in here. We got another one here. Boy, this is an odd setup here, the way they got this. To disconnect the throttle, we'll just pull this up through here. That releases that. And then it's just the fuel lines. I try to turn these back and forth to break them loose. This one's all dried out here. There we got it. There we got it. Let's take it over to the workbench, clean it real quick. You can see that little hole there. Well, it's all grooved in there. But how that, that fits right like that. You want to make sure you line that little, 
little hole there up with that. Now typically with carburetors, your biggest culprit's going to be a dried out diaphragm, which is right under here that controls the needle, or that on the intake where the fuel comes into the carburetor, a lot of times that filter, that filter screen can get clogged. So we'll go ahead and pull this off, take a look at it, see what we've got, clean it up. I try not to tear these when I take them apart. There we go. It's flexible. You got to be real careful. Look for tears in these or they'll be real stiff. And that's why I said you want to go along the edge. You don't want to cut that in there. This should really be changed. There we go. We got her. There's your needle valve under here. It's flexible. I don't see any holes or cracks in it. And you can take it outside, hold it up in the sun, or I hold it up to a light. And that'll show you if there's any cracks or whatever in it. But I think I can use this. There's your other adjustment screw right there. Right down in there. There's probably a plastic cap in there too that needs to come out. This one here would be your low side and this one here would be your high side. Adjustment screw. Pull the primer bulb off and this screw comes out here. There we go. There's that screen. Here's our other diaphragm. I'll pull this apart real quick since we're right here. A little sticky in there. And you can see you got to be very careful with these. See that? You don't want to lose that. This actually goes on this pin right here. But I want to clean this out first. There we go. Sometimes I've seen these, they, they look clean, but you look at the back side when you get it off and it's all crusty. This one looks real good. It's clear right through. So I can put that back in. And the lipped side goes up and it just presses in. Just a compression fit in there. Good. That's about it. We can put it back together. You can see this side's concave and the nub sticks out on that side. That's what that spring head fits into on that nub right there. So you want to make sure to orient that right. Otherwise you're not going to get any fuel. There we go. I like to double check that spring in there then after that. Make sure it's seated in there right. Looks good. 
tighten that down. Not real tight, just snug. Now this little roller, you don't want to lose that. It allows this to spin freely. Got it. Yeah, doggy. And I just want to make sure this is open here. See where that comes out? I can see right through there now. Line up our screw holes. Beautiful. Nice and smooth. There we go. You want to check that? Make sure there's no tears or cracks in any of these. Looks good. And then I like to check and make sure this is all open. But that primer bulb was working well, wasn't it? So I don't think we have a problem here. It's open. Looks good. I guess before we put that on, check and see if there's a cap on that one too. big <laughs> finally got it out just a little plastic plug oh that one's stuck good usually they do it yeah sometimes you even have to take a knife and peel them off there I got it all right now we can adjust the high side and the low side I always like to start these little screws in aluminum by turning them counterclockwise till I hear a click And then screw them in. That way you don't cross thread it. There we go. You don't have to go crazy tightening that down. Not the best bulb, but she's working. All right, looking good. Just like that. Okay, let's go throw it back on and see if it will run. So we'll hook this up. All right, now we'll check and make sure that our throttle's working right. Oh yeah. Now let's give her a pull. Prime it up. Come on, baby. Now unfortunately, cleaning, rebuilding, and adjusting this barrel type carburetor wasn't a complete fix for this blower, but we did get it running and I hope it was a help to you. If it was, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. And I look forward to helping you with other projects. I'm live.